Hello, I'm Tom Davis, Partnership Leader for Health and Nutrition for World Vision International. And on behalf of myself and Phil Moses, Director of Health Programs, this is a presentation on care groups, a fully inclusive, equity-oriented approach for vaccination. Let's begin by talking about the, what the care group approach looks like and what happens during its use. With the care group model, you start with a census which targets all households or every household with a beneficiary, such as pregnant lactating women and children under age two or age five. There's a flexibility on which households are included. This is World Vision's model using the care group approach, which we call nurturing care groups, since they're used to promote behaviors from all five elements of the nurturing care framework. Next, the caregivers in each group of 10 to 5 households, 10 to 15 households, see the far right, select a second tier volunteer community health worker who will serve them. These care group volunteers are then trained every two weeks in groups of about 12, either by a paid care group promoter who works with about five to nine care groups or first tier community health workers who work with only two groups of volunteers each. The groups of volunteers are the care group and the groups of caregivers are often called neighbor circles. The care group promoters are supervised by a supervisor, then a community health worker in the care group uh, promoters role. They are uh, usually supervised by health facility staff. The care group volunteer uh, learn a new behavior promotion lesson every two weeks and then cascade that down to households that they serve. It's essentially a behavior change platform. Let's talk about some of the program design features of care groups that promote full inclusion and equity. To start with, it's a multiplier and cascading model. It expands the reach of first-year community health workers, allowing them to reach many more households more frequently at low cost via volunteers. It's a push rather than a pull model. It uses a combination of home visits and group meetings, which are flexible, uh, to assure complete coverage with home visits to defaulters. Men, mothers-in-law, and other influencers can be reached in the household. The ca caregiver contact by care group volunteers is constantly tracked so you can know if they're actually having the coverage they need to be having. The caregivers uh, and the households with the most vulnerable children or, or other targeted children like zero dose children can receive additional home visits by the care group volunteer. It's peer-based. That gap between the community health worker and the caregiver, educationally, geographically, culturally, is smaller than what uh, we may assure, uh, is smaller which may assure better reach and relationship. There are about 20 to 26 caregiver contacts per year as part of this uh, model, and it's an integrated approach. More and more frequent opportunities to refer and convince caregivers to get their children vaccinated are possible with this model. For example, compared to non-household visits with our time to targeted counseling model. Um, also, in terms of how care groups have improved immunization coverage, um, it identifies children needing vaccination and increases immunization demand. Combined with barrier analysis formative research, which is recommended in the care group training manual, you can specifically identify and target the most important social and behavioral drivers of vaccine uptake. It helps the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders to be aware of systemic barriers and quality of service through direct and repeated contact with caregivers and feedback from them. Discussion of barriers is done during the biweekly contacts with the volunteers. Other behaviors and services can be and are promoted through the model across many sectors. Zero-dose children are also probably missing out on some of these other services. And we've seen excellent outcomes in other sectors, such as nutrition, WASH, and child protection. This graph shows some baseline to final changes in the proportion of children fully vaccinated in eight care group projects with an average indicator gap closure of 40 percentage points. And this graph compares gap closure in four care group projects to nine non-care group projects and shows 32% and 28% better gap closure relatively with care groups as compared to non-care group projects. The best evidence we have for this approach as compared to traditional non-cascading community health worker models is this 2015 study where we compared the effectiveness of multiple care group projects in five African and Asian countries to other USAID-funded 
child survival projects that did not use care groups. We looked at adoption of 15 key child survival behaviors and the effect on the under five mortality rate. We compared 10 care group and nine non-care group projects in this study, which were matched by country and year of program implementation, and they all had similar budgets. Through that evaluation, we found that care groups outperformed on all 15 indicators, had double the behavior change of non-care group projects, and may have had 53% greater under five mortality reduction. This matched the performance trend we had been seeing with much larger data sets without the matching uh, by country. Since this model increases vaccine demand, a vaccination delivery system needs to be put in place to handle that increased demand. Or alternately, that system needs to be improved concurrently through wraparound activities at the health facility level, such as cold chain improvement. While not an intervention, it is good to pair care groups with a corollary monitoring system using LQAS or other monitoring and screening tools to first prioritize geographical areas where care groups should be set up, areas where there's poor equity, lower vaccination coverage, or more zero-dose children, and secondly, to identify those areas where immunization rates and equity are not improving fast enough. LQS was used in the large Mozambique trial very effectively to identify care group service areas that were not improving quickly in service coverage so that additional activities could be added on in those areas. This approach requires supervision of the CHWs or NCG promoters, often by health staff or NGO staff. It only requires a, a, a low level of literacy uh, amongst the care group volunteers. In the large Mozambique published trial, only 20% of the care group volunteers were literate. This can be a huge advantage in many fragile settings. The care group approach has been used by 32 organizations in 42 countries, with many of those applications being to increase demand for vaccinations and other services, demonstrating its wide applicability in many settings. The model has been scaled in Malawi by the Ministry of Health. It's been adapted in Ethiopia, and there's interest in Senegal in scaling it. The principle of having two tiers of community health workers has been tried successfully in several countries, most notably Ethiopia, and is advocated by global experts on CHW systems, such as Dr. Henry Perry. This model is more sustainable and scalable in part because of the very low cost. The average cost per beneficiary per year of projects using the care group approach is in the range of three to eight dollars. And these rates are for projects that often cover multiple sectors. On a per capita basis, the large Mozambique project cost 54 cents per year. The cost per DALI averted varies from about $15 to $126, a fraction of the threshold for highly cost-effective interventions. This model is also polyvalent. It allows the Ministry of Health to increase service demand and care seeking and achieve multi-sectoral behavior change with the same platform. This graph on the right shows just one example of how we have seen health facility usage and service demand increase, in this case for institutional deliveries, after care groups were introduced. Sustainability studies on care groups by World Relief and the researcher Halkin Otura found high sustainability of outcomes years afterwards. World Relief found that 93% of care group volunteers were still active 20 months after the project ended, and half of the women in communities had received a visit from the care group volunteer in the past two weeks. Measuring indicators at 2.5 and four years post-project found that all the results were sustained or improved. This graph shows the increase in the percentage of children fully vaccinated in the project from baseline to final, the blue line, and then maintenance of that rate above 90% at 36 months post-project. A separate study by Tura in 2017 had very similar findings, so this could help Gavi with transitioning. Care groups have been used in development, rural, urban, and fragile emergency contexts, and I've linked to a few examples of care group projects in those settings on this slide. Thank you.